In this example, I'm going to show you how to take some data that you've made up in Excel and use it to illustrate two different locations in the brain which have been activated, for example. So I'm not going to go into all the details behind how you got to this point because that's that's the hard part and that's your your job to try and do. What I'm going to what I'm going to show you is a simple way just to put images together so that you can show brain imaging data in relation to the brain itself. So I've got two graphs on this page. The first one at the top is from the posterior superior temporal sulcus, which is a part of the brain that likes faces, and another graph at the bottom from the visual cortex, which uh, also seems to be a place of the brain that activates during face perception. So in the experiment that I'm making up, um, people were looking at two faces, either their own face or someone else's face, and it was either happy or sad. So it's a simple two by two design. And from the, the data I've got here on this page, it looks like the, the posterior superior temporal sulcus shows an interaction between face identity and face happiness. So it's, uh, it's more active when self faces are happy and it's also more active when other faces are sad. So this shows an interaction between face identity and face happiness. Now I'm making these data up and I have no idea if this is what actually happens in the brain. So don't take this as literal. The second graph shows visual cortex and I'm suggesting in this graph that visual cortex shows a main effect of face identity. So there's a higher response for self faces on the left and a generally lower response for other faces on the right. There's probably not an interaction here and there's also probably not a, a main effect of face happiness. So these are two different effects, interaction at the top, main effect at the bottom. And that's a good way to show very simple interactions and main effects. So you can just look at the graph and see immediately that there is something going on. An interaction is the fact that the difference on the left side of the graph goes in the opposite direction to the difference on the right side of the graph. And the main effect, in general, the left side of the graph is higher, higher than the right side of the graph. I've used relatively boring grey colours so that they can easily be distinguished for however you print them. And dark grey for happy and light grey for sad. I've put a legend here because there are now two conditions, so it's interesting to um, define them and <clears throat> distinguish them. I've put simple labels for a title. In, in general, you shouldn't do titles for graphs if they're going on their own, but because this is now going into a, a picture of the brain, uh, I'm going to add titles to make it slightly more clear. Then we've got um, labels for the y-axis. This is bold response. That's the size of the response in brain imaging. And then labels for the x-axis. That's the conditions. One final thing to note. In general, um, in brain imaging experiments, the visual cortex shows very strong responses and other brain areas show quite weaker responses to visual stimuli. So the, the axis on the y-axis scale here, the y-axis scale here then goes up to 1.5, so look quite large responses in brain imaging, around 1%, and then in the other area um, it's much smaller. So make sure when you show your data, even if you're making it up, and especially if you're making it up, that you use realistic axes, realistic sizes and variabilities of data. And if you're not sure, you should just check some other articles for what realistic looking data looks like. So we're going to take these graphs, we're going to create a new image, and we're going to paste these graphs into the image and then add a picture of the brain. So first we need a picture of the brain. So I'm just going to go to the internet. Uh, I had a little search before and I found out that a good search term was human brain, spelt right, and then go to the images tab. Here are lots of nice brain images. Um, I'm just going to select the free to share and use tab on this browser. So this is the kind of brain you want to show. You don't want to show glossy brains from TV shows with lights coming out of them. 
and you don't want to show brains where they've already got things highlighted. You want a nice, simple, clear, clean picture of the brain to work from. And I think any of these at the top will be quite fine. So I'm going to just choose one that I like the look of. I think I'm going to go for this one. This one's got numbers on it already, so I'm going to go for this one. Simple picture from Wikipedia. So I'm just going to copy the image. Open up GIMP. That's my favorite image processing program. And then I'm going to paste that brain image. There we go. Very nice. So that's going to be the center of my image. And I'm going to put the, the two different graphs around this image to illustrate where the data are coming from. So I need to make the image much bigger. So in, in GIMP, that's done by changing the canvas size. So I'm just going to make it twice as big in each direction. And center the brain. Excellent. Now the, the brain areas that I'm interested in, the posterior STS, that, that's the superior temporal sulcus along the, the top third of the temporal lobe. And the posterior part is up there. So there's a, there's a region in there which likes faces, I believe. So we're going to put one of the example graphs is going to re relate to this location in the brain. And the other example graph is going to relate to the visual cortex, which is back at the occipital pole. So I'm going to move this brain around so that we can fit two graphs, one pointing to the posterior STS, another one pointing to the visual cortex. So I think if I put my brain in the bottom left, I should be able to get two nice graphs in there. So let's move my brain down to the bottom left. Excellent. And now we can fetch the, the graphs. That works very well. OK, I've pasted it into the image. It's, it's not showing at the moment, and that's because I need to create a new layer out of it. That's good. Um, this graph is pretty small in relation to the brain, so let's increase the layer. I think we scale it. Let's make it twice as big. That's pretty good. So because this is the STS, I want to uh, make sure I can sort of link th that graph to that part of the brain. So that, I think that's probably fine. And let's get the other graph. So make that new to a new layer. Make it twice as big. So at the moment, the background is actually transparent. So I'm going to add a new background. So if in, in GIMP, you add a new layer. Let's make it white so the graphs don't stick out. The new layer automatically goes to the top. I'm going to put it to the bottom. Yeah, and now this is starting to look quite a lot like the kind of image you would see in a brain imaging paper. Uh, now, in retrospect, I think my graph's a bit too small still, so I'm going to try and optimize the space again, try and move this brain around, so try and get the maximum use of the space, because you're probably going to be pasting into a white document, so you won't actually see any borders, so make sure you've got, you use all the space you can in the image, because the image is the the big thing, which you're going to take up a lot of kilobytes in space. Uh, let's make that a bit bigger. Let's make it a bit bigger again. Make sure when you change the size that you're also changing both axes. So this um, linking the height and the width should be kept on. That's a bit better. I can definitely see the labels much better now. So let's do the same with the other.
And now the edge of this graph is falling off the page, so you just want to move that graph across. Excellent. So now we have a nice scale, uh, two graphs showing two different sets of results, an interaction in the posterior superior temporal sulcus and a main effect in the visual cortex. Now you can see there's already there's a big big white space up here so you could easily put some more things in there you could put maybe some behavioral data showing uh, reaction times or errors or whatever it is you could potentially throw it, show a third brain area so think about the space you've got left and how else you can illustrate your data in there okay now we want to label the brain and I'm happy with this organization so I'm gonna to make it easy to label this brain I'm gonna merge this layer down into the main image and then going to get a pencil mark a black just to make, keep it nice and easy I'm going to then make a pencil mark to where I want to say this brain activity is coming from and then finally the visual cortex okay I think I could do, probably do better than this. It's not ideal. I could probably work on the, the arrangement and maybe the colors. But this is all you need to show a really good understanding both of your data and of your hypotheses because you're, you're identifying the part of the brain that you've been studying. The graphs are clearly showing the, the expected effects, so an interaction in the STS, the main effects in the visual cortex. Everything is visible and readable. It's a bit small. I could probably make the labels a bit bigger if I was going to do this again. Um, but if you print this nice and big in your report, then you'll see it all. And there's even space for a bit of creativity at the top. Finally, I want to expect, export this image as something I can easily paste into my report. So I'm just going to call that brain. And we're done.